Hello everyone, it's Indra here and I'm just going to show you the finished blaster which is right here as you can see. Yesterday I finished the, the cartridges and they turned out incredible. I'm so happy with all the different colours and all the different lights that I put in them. As you can see, just turn them on and even though there's a lot of light here, you can see that they definitely add something special um, to the whole thing. So, really really happy about these. I'm going to actually explain to you how exactly it is that they work. So I'm going to put this to the side for now. And I'm going to walk you through every single piece on each cartridge. So first of all we have cartridge piece A, which is this one, and it's the piece that holds the entire LED circuit. This means that I can actually extract it from the cartridge itself. I'm going to do it right now just to, to show it to you. So if I twist, I unlock it. And then I can just slide and it comes in a single piece. Alright, so taking this into account, this piece, as I said, holds the entire LED circuit. It has an LED which is 3 volts, around 3 volts, the positive and the negative wires, and then super importantly, a 6mm button here that I got on Adafruit. You can get any different button that you want, just as long as it is. 6 millimeters by 6 millimeters by 6 millimeters. Coming down from the wires, you have two little batteries, which are the LA41 type, and they are 1.5 volts. These batteries are super easy to uh, connect. You just have to solder a little bit on the negative pole of this one right here, and on the positive right here. I'm going to use these one to actually show you that you can completely extract the, the circuit. So, just like that, here we have the circuit. So again, battery for the positive and for the negative. And when they are against each other, they make the connection. And then when you press the button, it turns the LED on, right? If I let go, it turns it off. And this was my problem. That's why I needed to make a mechanism that will allow me to turn this into a, an on and off button. So I just needed to, to make sure that these were held together in place. And for this, I made this piece. And I'll try to show you. There are some little slits there. And there. These are just for the batteries to go down and into a position that they're not going to be moved. Another thing that's very important is that there it is, although it's not in this piece because I just didn't put it there, but there is a magnet okay, at the beginning of each cartridge piece A, which is right here. So I just select the magnet and the magnet is 5 millimeters by 4 millimeters and it's round. And you can slide one or two or three. I just recommend that you slide one or two. But just like there, glue it and make sure that the magnet right here on the in inner part of the blaster uh, matches the bowl so they actually uh, track each other instead of, uh, instead of pushing each other away. So really quickly, cartridge piece A. Okay, again, just push it and it turns the LED on. Okay, after this one, we have the next piece, which is cartridge piece B, you guess right, and this is the one that makes the whole thing work. If I just slide this over the piece, like that, and twist it a little bit, it will lock the two pieces. And if I twist again, it will turn the LED on. I'm going to show you with a section of this piece that I have that I use for testing purposes. So this is a piece, it has a little finger in there, which is like my finger, it's going to push the button, but from the inside. So, just going to slide it. I will show you now the easiest way to do this, how I made it possible uh, to do it. Oh, and it's super easy. So, right now, it's loose. If I twist it a little bit, now it's locked. Can't go anywhere. If I keep twisting, it's going to push that button. See? And it's also going to make like a little, little snappy sound, like that. And this is because it's got some some little legs here that are going to go into that piece 
and they're going to bend a little bit and they're going to clamp into place. So this is cartridge piece B and to align these two pieces it's really simple. I just made a little notch on each of them right here is one and then the other one just have to look for it right there. So we just align them and that's the correct way to set them because if you try to do the other way they're not gonna they're not gonna work. It's not gonna work. So just align these two pieces there you go and then twist and there you go you will turn the LED on. Okay, so this is cartridge piece B. Now, piece C, which is, you guessed right, it is the actual resin part. And I came up with two methods for achieving this effect. The first one, which was uh, the simplest one, but then it turned out to be uh, the most time consuming, it would be just a rigid piece that I would make a mold of, and then I would cast in epoxy resin with different pigmentations, effects, and things. So. I also model, model a mother mold, which is this one. It's just two pieces, and this is a silicone mold, and with little holes and keys to hold them together, and also um, some some exits here for the silicone, so you know exactly where your level of silicone is as you're pouring. And this was a little bit difficult to uh, to make, because you need to have, to have this special silicone, which has to be um, tin silicone. It doesn't react with the epoxy, and then once you do it, you cut a little bit, a little slit on the silicone, as you can see. So you can actually demold this, and the piece will come out clear because you've sanded the other one, uh, the main one. But it will come with a little straight like this. You have to then sand and polish. So it's a little bit of an effort for each piece. I figured, since a lot of people nowadays have a resin printer, that I would try a different method. Uh, thanks to my buddy Danny from work, who is awesome, and he's hearing me right now. <laughs> uh, we came up with the second method, which was way smarter and way better than the first one. This is what we came up with. Instead of having that awful uh, process, we just print like a face, like a little cup, which is, as you can see, empty. And then we can pour the resin, and that way we avoid getting any bubbles on the outside. Okay, and we get bubbles inside, it doesn't matter, it's okay, it makes a little effect. And then we can just kind of add on these little slits that you see right here, we can add different effects. So I spent a few uh, weeks trying out and modeling different effects. This is one of, the, one of them, it's called the energy effect number one. And just, you would pour the resin and just slide it in, you will lock it into place and it will cure and then it will hold it in place. And then you can just snap the support off and it will come clean and there you go. And there you go. Um, before you do that, let me uh, tell you that you can do this two ways. The first one is if you are going to have, if you're not going to have a boxy resin on the inside, which is the case of the lightning right here, it doesn't have a boxy resin on the inside. And if I turn the, all these lights off, you will see that it's a really cool effect. It looks like there's lightning cuts in in the resin tube or in the vase so if you don't if you want to do this right if you don't want to have resin and want to take advantage of this effect what you do is you polish the inside of it and you can do this with a rotary tool like a Vremel with a polishing attachment attached to it and then you polish the inside okay and when you're done make sure you clean it well with water and everything there's no dust what you do is you take a, uh, a replica of varnish, it has to be UV resistant, and then you spray a little bit, and then with the cotton bud, you go all around the inside, making sure that varnish is, coat, is coating the entire inner surface. And then when you're done, you can, you, can, you can then sand the rest, or even do this in the beginning, and polish the outside to make sure it's clean. All right. And a really important note is you don't have to cure these, uh, these tubes. And these are printed in, or these at least were printed in the Algo Mars clear resin and when you cure that resin it becomes a bit orangey so to avoid this what you can do is not cure it at all just clean it well with alcohol or water clean it well rinse it well and then you spray a few coats of that clear coat that is UV resistant so even if, if the sun hits it or if you just uh, put it on the um, under the UV lights it's not going to have uh, as much of, a, of an effect as if you just avoided that step. So I highly recommend you do that. And it also gives you a clearer feel 
which you realize right away. So polish it, varnish the inside, varnish the outside, and you have a way clearer face, just like this one, the lightning. So you want that. And then the method two, which is with epoxy resin, you don't need to polish the inside. What you do is just do the outside and then pour the resin and then lay one of these effects and you can paint these effects however you want. You can uh, try different effects, you can try different paints. I recommend you paint some of the, uh, some of the areas white. So when you pour the resin, resin with a clear resin inside uh, on the effect itself will become transparent, become almost invisible. And this allows us to uh, have a really, really cool effect on the inside. We can't tell that it's actually a model defect. Um, I'm going to show you exactly on the uh, plasma and the energy effect, whatever you want to name it. Um, if you look closely, you can see that on the inside there's a little, little texture that goes like that. And that's because I painted, oh, well, I painted the whole thing in, uh, uh, in some alcohol paints. I painted it in orange or in amber, and then with a brush, I dry brush the surface with some reds, and that those reds are going to are going to be caught in the light. You're going to be able to see them when you when you light the LED. Um, so it's a re it makes up a really really cool effect. Okay, so um, just pour the pour the resin and paint whatever you need to paint. Try different effects. Try different lights. Have fun with this. Play a lot. And tell me know. Uh, let me know what you what you think. Let me know how many different effects you've achieved. So again guys, this is uh, too much of a long tutorial, 12 minutes, not right now, but I'm really, really sure that it helped. Uh, some tips I can offer you, especially when soldering the circuit, uh, just to, to end this video. When you, when you solder the negative pole, okay, to, to the battery, you have to, well, for each of the batteries, you have to dremel in a little bit of texture, so that, uh, that tin gets uh, really well welded to the surface. But remember that on the on the on the negative pole, you can't touch the the uh, the outer walls that uh, the, the external circumference. You can't touch it with the wires because that will make a uh, that that will um, that will fuck up the circuit and it's not going to work. So just solder it to the to the middle of it, and remember to do a as much of a flat um, uh, weld as you can because. That's going to allow for the whole thing to work better. If you have a bunch of tin stuck in here, the the piece that's going to rotate, it's not going to work. It's going to get stuck in uh, in all this mess, and this is just not going to not going to work. So just make pay uh, attention and remember that uh, the length of the circuit is 3.5 centimeters. You can translate that in inches, or just uh, look at the render that I put together, and just make sure that they're both the same length. Okay, and this button. It's just the one that I got from Adafruit. Don't move the little legs, just solder it directly onto them. And the negative one, notice that it comes to the side a little bit. It's not straight down, but it goes to the side a little bit. Okay. And just uh, they're facing each other. Yeah, there you go, just, just put it in there. And it works really well. Again, I'll show you how I assemble this thing. Um, so just take the negative pole. And this is the front, where you can see the button, and this is the back. So the black wire, the negative wire, just goes down through it. But before you do that, make sure you have aligned the batteries properly. Just twisting them a little bit, just like that. Now, just repeat the whole thing, make sure that goes through there. And the both of the batteries rest on those little slits on the sides and then you just go down making sure that both going down there you go and then when you're done take the red wire and there's a little slit there you can just push it in just like that and it'll hold the whole circuit in place so there you go it works really well and then you use the piece I'm going to use this one for the sake of you seeing it again what it does. Push that button. So, there you go. And this is cartridge piece D, and the last piece is the cap that goes 
right on top of the of the resin uh, effect piece right there so it's just easy you know, just glue it there when you're done with the whole effect so to assemble the whole thing again just twist and lock and you have to glue piece B with piece T C just like that and remember that there's a little it's easy to glue it just there's no way you're gonna fuck this up guys it's just so, so simple just glue it there okay and then glue the last one here once you have the whole thing paint these uh, separately as always and then glue the whole thing and then to cover the glue the come the might come out or the seams just uh, use some use some oil and do an oil wash and it'll come out really really nice just again guys thank you so much i'm so pleased with how these turned out thank you so much for watching this long as video i'll see you next time peace